good morning. It's another beautiful Sunday morning and I'm super excited to be in church. Are you excited to be in church? Wow, I can see your lovely faces and I can see how excited you are to see me again. Yeah, I am your auntie and Tatina and today we are back to do something very spectacular. You know how Sunday morning normally is for us, right? How we dance and we worship and we fellowship and we learn together. Okay, so today, um, well, I am back with lots of goodies for you. And today's learning is something that is very, 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 very special in the Christian dub. And I am very sure that today you'll be learning something that would not just change your mentality, but something that is also going to change your mind about who God is and about, you know, everything about jesus and who jesus is to us and what gift he has given to us but before we go into today's service proper you know how we do it we need to close our eyes we need to pray then when we finish praying we'll do one thing what's that one thing we always do after prayer um anyone do you want to help me with that okay that is praise and worship that time where we dance all right but before we do that let's put our hands together close our eyes and let us pray dear heavenly father we thank you for another wonderful time in your presence we thank you for bringing us together again we thank you for our mommies we thank you for our daddies we thank you for our teachers and we thank you for everyone our friends father we thank you for all that you have done for us we pray that as we come together again to fellowship we ask that you send your word to us in the name of Jesus. Give us a retentive memory to remember all that will be taught today in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So, let's go to praise and worship. And don't forget, you have to dance. Alright? You have to dance. So, yeah, let's go for praise and worship. And by the time we come back, we are going to start the service fully. Alright, let's go. Hey friends, how are you doing today? I'm so excited to have you here this morning. Come on, say Jesus. I can't hear you. All right, now this morning we are going to do a song. It's titled, You Are God. Say you are God. Yeah, Jesus is God. He's not just big. He's not just large. He's a great God. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me see you dance. Let me see you dance. Let me see you dance. Come on. Are you ready? Say it. You are God. Woo! You are not just big, oh. You are not just large, oh. You are a great God. I'll take it again. You are God. Sing it, sing it. You are not just big, oh. You are not just large, oh. You are a grace, God. Let me hear you sing. You are God. You are God. Sing it. Say. Move your body. Come on. You are a great God. One more time. You are God. 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 Woo. Hey, you are not just ego. You are not just flat. All right, now, friends, we are going to demonstrate. Say, you are big, big, you are. Come on. Sing it, say. You are a great God. One more time. You are big, 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 big. Woo. Are you demonstrating? Nice. Smile on your face. Come on. One more time. Say, you are big, 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 big. Are you smiling at all? Come on. Yay. You are the French God. Yeah, give God your dance. Give God your dance. Come on. This next song we are about to do, it says, head, shoulders, knees, and toe. Belong to Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready? 
are going to do this together. You're going to touch your head, your shoulders, your knee, and your toe. One, two, three, go. Head, shoulders, knees, and toe. Say, head, shoulders, knees, and toe. Head, shoulders, knees, and toe. My head, shoulders, knees, and toe. Say, they all belong to Jesus. They all belong to Jesus. Say, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Come on. Say, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Come on. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. They all belong to Jesus. Come on. They all belong to Jesus. Put your hands in the air and give God praise. Come on. Jump, 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 jump. Come on. If you are excited, make some noise. Shoulders, knees, and toes. Hey, my head, shoulders, knees, and toes. They all belong to Jesus. Finally, they all belong to Jesus. They all belong to Jesus. Come on, give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Make some noise. All right, now we're going to take a worship song. It's a very simple song. It says, You've got times and seasons in your hands. You call for light out of darkness. You've got times and seasons in your hands. Can you lift up your hands and shut your eyes and just give God glory? You called for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. To call me your own, I will teach you. It says, You've got times and seasons in your hand. Let me see you wave your hands to God this morning. You call for light. Sing with me. Let's go. You called for light out of darkness. You don't need a man. Say, You don't need a man to be the God you. You have chosen to call me. You have chosen to call me your own. Say, you are God. You are God from beginning to end. There's no place. There's no place for our new friends. You are God. You are God. Come on, friends, sing it. Wave your hands and sing it from side to side. Say. Yeah, you're getting it. Yes, say there's no place for a radio. Wave your hands to God. Come on, wave your hands to God with a smile on your face. Tell God you are God. There's no place for arguments. Jesus hear your voice this morning. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Finally, sing it again. You are God. Say, you are God from beginning to the end. Let's go. There's no place for argument. You are God all Welcome back. Did you have fun? Hey, I mean, I was still dancing. All right. It's always a wonderful thing to praise and to worship God. You know that God loves it when we praise Him and God loves it when we worship Him at all times. All right. So this is a new month. 
Yeah, welcome to the month of August. I am so excited about this month because it's also my bet month. So it's always very interesting when we get into the month of August. So yeah, the month of August is a very special month for each and every one of us. And our theme for this month is called salvation. Hmm, salvation. I know you would ask, what is salvation? But don't, don't worry, while we go into the week and you know, into all of our studies during the week, you will understand what we mean by salvation. So our topic for today is titled, Heaven is free. Heaven is free. You know, when I saw that topic, I started to think, hmm, Heaven is free. Could heaven really be free? Do I have to pay to get to heaven? What should I do for me to get to heaven? All of these things you're going to find out in today's teaching. So stay with me. But before we start, I would love us to read the Bible so that we can get a clearer view of what it is like to know if heaven is free or if we have to pay to get to heaven. So do you have your Bibles with you? Yeah, I have my Bible with me. Do you have your Bibles with you? You know, I always tell you to have your Bibles, a writing pad and a pen so that you'd be able to jot down some of the things that would be learning. And for those of you who cannot read your Bible, don't feel too bad. Don't worry, I am going to read out the Bible to you and I'm going to explain what the Bible says, okay? So if you have your Bibles, your pen and your book, I want you to sit down comfortably, yes? Aha, sit down comfortably and let us read the Bible together. Now I'm going to be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. So let's start. And someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do to obtain internal life? That is, internal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom which means the kingdom of God. And Jesus answered, Why are you asking me about what is good? There is only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into internal life, keep the commandments. Hmm, the commandments. All right, let's, let's keep reading. He said to Jesus, Which commandments? And Jesus answered, you shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and your mother and love your neighbor as yourself. What does that even mean? That is unselfish seeking of the best I good for others. The young man said to him, I have kept all of these things from my youth. What do I lack? Then Jesus answered, If you wish to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come back and follow me. Because my disciples believe and trust in me and walking in the same part of life that I walk. But when the young man heard of all of this, he left grieving and distressed, like he was very angry, he was disappointed at what Jesus said. For he owned much properties and had many possessions, which he treasured more than the relationship he had with God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, it is difficult for a rich man who clings to possessions and status as security to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man who places his faith in wealth and status to enter into the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were completely astonished and bewildered saying, then who can be saved from the wrath of God? But Jesus looked at them and said, with people, as far as it depends on you, 
it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Wow. Is that not a beautiful reading? Yeah, that is a beautiful reading. Now, what was the story about? It's a story of a young man who had lots of wealth. He had lots of money. He had cars, it had houses. You know, he just had a lot of things. Then he came to Jesus and he asked, Master, what can I do to get into the kingdom of heaven? And yeah, Jesus said a surprising thing that, that got me thinking. I'm like, okay, sell your property. You know, Jesus told him to go and sell all that he has and follow him. So thinking about it, why would Jesus want him to sell all that he has just to follow him? I mean, this is someone who is comfortable. This is someone who is rich. He has everything you could think of. But Jesus wants him to sell all of those things and give the money to the poor, to the needy, to the beggars on the street, to those, those people who cannot afford to feed, to those people who cannot afford to pay their school fees, you know? Those are the kind of people that Jesus wanted him to give the money to. And the guy thought about it. Huh. I mean, if I sell everything that I have, what would become of me? If I sell everything that I have, how would I survive? So you see, he had faith in his earthly possessions. He did not believe in God. I mean, he didn't believe in Jesus. He didn't believe that if he's able to sell all those things, Jesus would be able to take care of him. He was comfortable with what he has. And he chose to be with those things except to be with Jesus. But Jesus wanted him to follow him. Do you know that if he has sold those things and followed Jesus, then, I mean, he would have, he would have lived his life filled with Christ in it. He would have lived his life in the way that God wants him to live. But no, he held on to the earthly possession that he has. He held on to the cars. He didn't want his cars to go. He didn't want his houses to go. He wasn't concerned about feeding the poor. He wasn't concerned about helping others. He was only concerned about what he has. And the Bible says, the riches of, you know, the rich, the rich might not see the kingdom of God. That does not mean that rich people would not see the kingdom of God. What that just means is if you hold on to your earthly possession more than you believe in God, more than you have faith in God, you would not see the kingdom of God. And now, coming back to our topic, which is heaven is a free gift. Heaven is a free gift normally for everyone. I mean, Jesus has paid the price already for us. That was the reason why Jesus came to die. Remember John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So what happened to this man? This man did not believe in God. If he had believed in God, if he had believed in the son of God, he would have sold all of his possessions and have everlasting life. But because he didn't believe in that, he, he was, um, I don't know if I should call him a selfish man. <laughs> uh, the Bible in the record, I was a selfish man, but I think he was just someone who wasn't comfortable with letting go of what he has. Does that happen to us sometimes as children? Yes, it does. We have things we don't want to let go of. We, we, have, we, have, um, we have toys that we have outgrown, but we still want to play with them because it is ours. Mommy bought them for us. But do you know that there are other people out there who cannot even afford to get even if it's one toy? Who has never even seen toys in their lives at all? So would you want to be that child that will let go of your possessions and follow Jesus. 
The only way you can enter into the kingdom of God is truly to follow Jesus. Is to let go of everything. Let go of everything that you have and just follow Jesus. And how do you follow Jesus? Doing what he wants you to do. How do you follow Jesus? Trusting and believing in him. You have to trust and believe in Jesus. You have to trust and believe in God. That is what God expects from us as children of God. Yeah? He wants us to trust him. He wants us to believe him. No matter the situation, no matter wherever you find yourself, it just believes that, okay, if you trust me enough, I'll be able to take care of you. And that was what happened to the man. I mean, the young man. The young man did not trust Jesus enough that he was going to take care of him. That was why he went away sad. That was why he walked away frustrated. Right? So, you don't want to be like the young man, do you? No, 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 no. You don't want to be like that young man. Do you want to be that man that will sell all of your things and follow Jesus? You want to be that man that do what God wants you to do. If God says, do not hate your neighbor, you won't hate your neighbor. That's to say, you would love your neighbor because it was written in the scripture that love your neighbor as yourself. That is what God wants you to do. God wants you to love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, I read some of the commandments. Do not do this. Do not do that. Do not steal. Do not disobey your parents. Which is also a very key thing. Do not disobey your parents. What does that even mean? When mommy asks you to do something, you don't strong your leg and like, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. You don't, you don't argue with them. Yes, you don't argue with mommy. When mommy is saying it's bedtime, go to bed. You're not grumbling or saying, no, no, mommy, just give me a few minutes. No, that is disobeying your parents. And the Bible did say that you should not disobey your parents. So when daddy is saying, it's time for homework. Where are your books? Come sit down. Let's do our homework together. Then you're like, oh no, daddy, can we just watch cats on the beat? Uh-uh. That is you disobeying your parents. And God doesn't want that. That is why it was written in the scripture that do not disobey your parents. So you see, these are some of the things that you shouldn't do for you to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. If you do not disobey your parents, if you do not steal, if you give to the poor, if you, if you love others this way you love yourself, then you'll be able to see the kingdom of God. So sometimes it is not by the things that we have done that helps us to earn salvation. Yeah, it's not by the things that we have done. But oftentimes it's God's grace and God's mercy that keeps speaking for us, that helps us to see the kingdom of God. So our take home for today is, you cannot end your way to heaven. You cannot pay to get to heaven. There is nothing you can do within your power to get to heaven. Do you know why? Because heaven is free for all of us. Jesus, have already, um, Jesus has already paid the price. So heaven is free for you. Heaven is free for me. All you have to do is to believe. Will your good deeds get you to heaven? Well, no. Do you know why? Because you cannot pay for, you know, you can pay your way to get to heaven. You cannot. Heaven is a free gift to us. That was why Jesus died for us. He died for us so we can go to heaven. So we can have a good life. So we can be free. So you see, 
Jesus has given us a free gift. I know sometimes you get scared that, oh, um, if you do this, you go to hellfire. If you do this, um, hellfire is waiting for you. And most times I hear children say that. But is that truly right? When Jesus has paid the price for us, when Jesus has given us the free gift, please, how do you go to hellfire? So I'm not going to talk about that so much, but I'm just going to let you know that heaven is free for every one of us. It is a beautiful gift that God has given to us. Not like we are deserving of it. Because sometimes we do things that we are not supposed to do. Sometimes we disobey mommy. Sometimes we, 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 we gossip. Sometimes we, you know, we fight our friends. Other times we, 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 we do things that we are not supposed to do. Things that God wouldn't want us to do. But in spite of all of that, God still loves us. Like, He loves us so much that He cannot be angry with us. God loves us so much that He wouldn't want us to die. He wouldn't want us to rot in hell. Do you know why? Because He is a good and loving Father. He is a Father that loves us so much. That is the reason why he gave us heaven as a free gift. So today I want you to know that God loves you so much that he gave you free gift of heaven. All you have to do is to just believe in him. Is to just trust him with all of your heart. Trust that he is God. Believe that he is God. And confess it with your mouth all the time. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I trust God is always going to be there for me. I trust God that God is always going to take care of me. So if you trust God that much, if you love God that much, trust me. If God asks you to sell all of your possessions and follow him, you won't have a choice. You would follow him. Do you know why? Because those things don't matter to you. I mean, there are lists. There should, should be the list of your problems. They don't matter. What matters to you is God. What matters to you is your relationship with God. What matters to you is, you know, how much you want to you know, how much you want to love God and follow all of his commandments. Because if you love God, you will do his commandments. You will keep his commandments. If you love God, you will do the right things. If you love God, you would love your neighbor. If you love God, you won't be jealous of your brother. Yes. You won't be jealous of your sister. You won't be jealous of your friend. Oh, somebody comes first all the time. I don't come first. Then you start to get jealous of the person. No. If you love God that much, you won't be jealous. You'll be envious of someone else. Now, let me tell you this one thing. Do you know that if you love God, there are lots of things that you won't be doing anymore? Yes. Like disobeying your mom or disobeying your dad or even disobeying your nannies. When your nanny tell you, go and sit down there, you'll be like, no, who are you to talk to me that way? Come on. Or when your class teacher say, hey, stop talking. And you start to, you know, mumble words like, Wah. no. If you love God that much, you would understand that God wants you to respect your elders. And that way, you would always respect your elders. So, I want you to think about it. Are there times that you have done things that 
you know that God is not happy about. Are there times that you have disobeyed mommy, your teachers? Are there times that you have been, you know, you have been a bit nutty? Even though you know you shouldn't be naughty. Then, I want you to ask God to forgive you and help him and help and let him help you to trust him and believe in him at all times it's very important it is very very important i am sure that you have been able to learn something from all that i have taught you today and you are going to walk with the things that you know you have learned today so i'm going to go to um our memory verse today is taken from the book of matthew chapter 19 verse 26 and it says but jesus looked at them and said with people it is impossible but with God, all things are possible. Again, I read Matthew chapter 29, verse 26, the Amplified Version. But Jesus looked at them and said, With people, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Should I take it one more time? Yes, let me read it one more time. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, and it says, but Jesus looked at them and said, With people it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Yes, with God all things are possible. So don't look at the things that you have. Look unto God. Believe in God because with Him all things are possible. So that brings me to the end of today's topic and today's lesson but there is um, an assignment for you and the assignment is i want you to read the book of genesis chapter 11 verse 1 to 8 next week would we'll have to answer the questions that follows in that bible verse is that okay all right so should we close our eyes to pray do we have to oh yes we have to so please let's close our eyes and pray Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that has come forth today. We ask that in the name of Jesus, help us to trust in you. Help your children to believe in you, knowing that you are God. Help them to let go of their past mistake. Let them to let help them to let go of their 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 urge and things they they are holding on to and help them to follow you every day of their life help them to believe in you and have help them to have strong faith in you that you are always there to be with them you're always there to protect them you're always there to care for them and you're always there to see them through in the name of jesus father we ask that every word that has come forth today will be seed planted in the heart of your children and it will bear good fruit in the name of jesus for in jesus name we have prayed amen and amen so that brings us to the end of today's lesson and today's um service i had a wonderful time with you i am sure you had a wonderful time with me too don't worry you're going to see me back next week sunday until then bye bye have a wonderful week and be a good boy and a big good girl thank you bye bye